Yo, what's good guys? It's Leno from Team Producer Grind. We're going to talk about the basics of mixing, mainly leveling, volume, and sound selection. I'm going to drag a loop. Shoutouts to Meek. We got this pop pack. We, it's called Billboard Pop. It's like an Ariana type loop. Inspired by her Positions album. The things I like to prioritize for hip hop and trap, kick and bass, and you know, you could either be team kick or team 808. If you're like me, I just start doing both. I like the 808 and kick to knock. Volume levels is one of the most fundamental things you guys got to learn about mixing and sound selection. You know, I'm biased because I work with producer Graham, but shout outs, we got high quality kits. Even our free ones, our free loops, our free drums, they're already EQ'd, compressed, saturated the way we wanted it to sound. We made it easy for you guys, so all you have to do is play with levels. Shout out to YB, the MIDI's already done. Like, this is pretty solid, you know? Now, just off of those three elements, the melody, the snare, or whatever, the clap, and the hi-hat, if you listen, it's showing that the snare clap is the loudest thing, but I can't lie, the melody is also pretty loud. Shoutouts to me and Meek, man, we made that shit <laughs> fire with the analog gear. It sounds nice and full, but remember, when you start to add drums, what did we say the order was? Kick 808, snare or clap or rim, hi-hats and melody. So hi like melody is like the third thing I would consider. So I would even just lower this down just to see how much I could turn it up more before it starts getting too loud and masking the drums. You want the drums to have priority in this genre, in this genre, like hip-hop trap. This is as low as you could go, and you could go even higher. And notice how I'm not tripping on the numbers. And the reason why I don't teach too much on numbers, like the numbers on the, uh, on the fader, uh, my bad, on the volume, on the meter, I don't like to... The numbers are good as a guide. You know, it's a good guide. Some people suggest certain numbers to hit on the meters whether it's negative 12, 9, 6, 3, 0, whatever. But I want you guys to use your ears. At the end of the day, everything we're doing mixing-wise is just a guide. What we're seeing might not always be what we're hearing, depending on the plugin, depending on the algorithm. Here's another quick tip when you're mixing to see where the levels are at. You could do it in two ways, and I suggest you do it in both ways. You can make your whole track in mono, meaning what you're hearing is no longer left and right, but it sounds like it's in the middle. Now, I don't want to go too deep in what mono versus stereo means, but to make it very simple, a stereo signal is two signals, left, left signal and your right signal. When you make it from stereo to mono, which in FL you go to the master and you make stereo separation 100% merged, you hear the difference between this, mono, and this right here. Like stereo sounds wider. Why is that? Because it's having the left and right signal, what we're used to. But mono, back in the day, they only had one speaker. Stereo system's like a new invention. Like, look at the Beatles. Not everyone has the latest iPhone that has, you know, stereo speakers. A lot of older phone speakers are mono, one speaker. Not all laptop speakers are stereo. Some are mono, one speaker. Some car speakers, some restaurant speakers, or you're shopping at Target or wherever, groceries, that's one speaker. So if your song can stand out in mono, you have the elements that you want to stand out in one speaker, you'll be fine. Check things in mono because when things are in the middle, you no longer have the illusion of left and right. And if everything is in the middle, it's going to reveal to you from bottom to top, to, from most quiet to the loudest, what is there. So watch, if I put in mono, if I just listen, that snare or clap is the loudest thing, right? And then it's the hi-hat, and then it's the melody. But if I make it stereo, 
it seems like the melody is just as loud as the snare. Why? Because that melody is super wide. It's very left and right. It's very stereo. Whereas your drums technically live in the middle. You could have drums be stereo for certain spots, but that's more advanced stuff. I'm not going to get into that. The very basics is drums and vocals, main vocals in the center. Melodies, decorations, textures, everything else wide like stereo, like left and right. That is checking things in mono. That's going to reveal to you what is loudest, what is softest. Another way to check your levels is just going to your actual sound system, whatever that may be, like on your computer and lowering the volume. So I'm just going to lower the volume on my interface. I'm literally turning down what I'm going to hear in my headphones. If I were to put anything on the master channel specifically for FL Studio, it's the stock Fruity Soft Clipper. And I don't have it at a certain setting. I just have it default as if I was just to open up the plugin. Whatever setting it is, I don't touch it. Other people like to tweak with it. I just leave it as is on the master. I got that tip from TB. You just raise the volume on your different elements. And it's going to, even if it clips, that's why it's called the soft clipper. Even if it clips, if it goes past zero and distorts a little bit, the master channel that's controlling everything is going to give it a nice tone. It's going to still make it knock without being too distorted. But you could only crank it so much before people start being like, yo, that shit's like too clipping. But here's the thing. What genre are you making? In a lot of trap songs, that is part of the sound. That's where a lot of engineers F up. They, you know, they mess up the producer's drums because they think it's bad. But that they intentionally wanted it like that distorted and that much clipping. So you got to just know your intent and your purpose when you're making music. What's your audience? Who are you making this for? Which artist? Which producer? If you're an engineer, who are you mixing this for? And what's the goal? Now look at the 808. We see it's not the loudest thing. It's, it's still the snare is dominant or the clap. Put in mono. Like we could definitely crank it. I like to crank it more on the actual channel, on the actual, what they call, it's like clip gain. It's like raising the gain on the actual sound of the drum before the faders. You remember those two things, source and destination. Source, like where is this sound coming from? Destination, where do I want this sound to go? So the reason why I bring that up is before you even touch the fader, where is the sound coming from? It's coming from this file and this file has a volume knob. So when you engineer, you want the, you want more flexibility so you could tweak things later. I'm going to raise it at the very source. I'm going to raise the volume at the source, which is right here. Because this is sending to, right, destination 5, which is 5 on the mixer channel. And then I could play with volume here. I could insert different effects, EQs, compressions, all that there. But before everything else, the source, I'm playing with that sound and raising the volume there. <laughs> It's also distorting a little bit. Why? Because as you raise the 808s, as you raise the kicks, as you raise the low end, the melody has to give room. Now, there's two ways you could do that. Like this melody, if we pull up an EQ, there's some low end information. All this is where the 808s and kicks are going to live. You don't got to cut all the lows because it might take away the life of the melody, but just take out some and play it with the whole thing. When you guys make mixing moves, right? This is another problem that engineers do. Any mixing moves I'm making, it's not really that accurate because we're not gonna hear the song as just the melody. We're gonna hear the song with all the elements. So I'm gonna unsolo this. I'm gonna mix in context and use my ears to see what sounds better and how much low end I could take out of this melody to give room for that loud 808s. So here we go. <laughs> Start off intense like this. Now you really hear the 808s. Slowly bring up the melody, some information on the lower end of the melody. 808s still cool. frequency the mm, whatever synth that is it's kind of eating up a lot it's kind of distracting the 808 so i'm gonna dip that just a little bit now the 808's hidden i'll play with 
up the volume here again. Raise that snare a tiny bit. So you don't do anything else to your 808, like uh, compress or um, anything else like that? Hell nah. I might saturate it with this dope plugin called Black Box. Anybody else producer that has drums that already knock, here's the problem with compressing it and putting too many effects. You notice how like the 808, I don't have anything on it. It's just volume. Because without vocals, without the actual lead vocal, the rapper, the artist, singer, without them on it, let the engineer handle that. You don't want to over mix and give an artist mm, okay. a beat that doesn't knock, right? Now, okay. that's why you have stems on the mixer. So in case the engineer is like, yo, that 808 is way too much, man. It's kind of distorting the vocals. Number one, if I was that engineer, I would never say that to the producer because if they're a producer in this genre, I'm assuming they did the 808s that loud and that purpose. And that's just the engineer's lack of different ways to tame that to make room for the vocals without killing the life of the 808. That's the problem with some engineers, man. They get, they, they fuck up the producer's bounce. They fuck up the mix. They fuck up the knock because they're doing what's correct, making room for the vocals. But if the artist, right, because the artist is the priority, right? Because at the end of the day, it's the artist's song. Now we could argue the producer has more influence than the artist and vice versa. But at the end of the day, the producer is trying to help the artist too. Now, if we take away the life of the drums and the artist notices that, as an engineer, you effed up. I don't care if you did the right thing. Like, you got to see it in context, right? Now, the only reason I would compress or EQ a 808 is when I already have vocals. And I usually do it on Pro Tools. I just prefer that to mix, like, stuff with vocals and finishing a whole song. Because FL, I mainly produce and then I pseudo mix. Like, what I'm doing right now. It's levels, and maybe a little EQ, maybe a little distortion saturation. I'm using a spins. A spins is super clean, distorting. If I do too much to a spins, it's not gonna hit. It's not gonna hit the same. It might as, kill the 808, huh? It might kill the 808. Let's just use the stock one because everyone has this. Or any stock compressor. Here we go. And then you have to raise the ratio, like even two. And raise the gain. So it's like, oh yeah, I compressed it, guys. I raised the gain. This hits without it. Boom, the life is gone. It hits, but it doesn't hit as it, you just no, squashed yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah, for sure. So it kicks pretty loud, I'ma lower it. Again, mono, right? It just I just want the kick to be a little accent. a bit I might even raise the 808 a bit and then now the 808 if I want to give it extra juice you know just do a basic EQ here we go I might give it a little bit more low end like around the hundred Bring it around 400. Not too low, too low. Yeah, that 120 range is crazy. Here in mono. Yeah, actually, that snare lower is better. Drums are knocking to the point where you, you just feel it. Like, you f if you're not feeling your drums viscerally, especially if you have speakers, you gotta feel. Like I said in the B critique yesterday, like the kick 
has to hit your chest. The 808 has to like, you feel around your stomach. Snares, hi-hats are up here. Melodies around here, kind of like far back and drums are up front with the vocals. That's how I like to mix. I see it in spaces. I don't know how people see color. That's fucking crazy. And to give the perk a little bit less dryness, I might throw in a little reverb, just a tiny bit. So I'm gonna lower decay a bit, lower the wetness, increase the size, and let's play with the wet level. See how it kind of blends with the melody more? Yeah, it sounds really good with the reverb. Because that melody has a lot of reverb. That's there a little loud. Might go like a little less. There it is. My hats. Kicks. Mono. I do is when I you know split by channel that pattern so I get all the drums in separate patterns I even layer it as if it was most important to least important again for organizational purposes not everyone that's in a studio that's pressured to cook up quick has the time to do this but for the sake of this tutorial it's a good way to explain it so again 808s and kicks right then I have the claps then I usually have the hi-hats that's the meat right there because like that's the meat and potatoes <laughs> The main thing. I could have the beat like this. It's cool, but it's not as interesting, you know? You know, add a little hat, open hat to it. It's gonna impact it a little different. Adds a little texture. A little rim for the bounce.